Welcome back to another episode of the Chaosium House RuneQuest campaign. I'm Jeff Richard, and I'll be your game master tonight. I want to thank my players, Linda Morgan, Richard August, Philip Glass, Neil Robinson, and of course, Claudia Loroff, who will be joining us a little bit later tonight. Why don't you all introduce yourself and your characters? Hi, my name is Neil Robinson. I'm playing Nisk, who's an Orlando adventurous worshiper, and uh, he likes to ride a bison, even though some in the group apparently cannot. Uh, hi, my name is Linda Borgen. I'm playing Nikala, who is a, uh, a High Lama rider, Stormbull Shaman. As one is. Of course. As, as one tends to be. Yes. I'm uh, Richard August. I'm playing Garan Grimseeming, who's a Humacti uh, bodyguard and general all-round warrior. Uh, he doesn't like bisons, and that's why he's recently acquired himself a rather lovely horse that he's going to learn to ride. <laughs> and my okay. Name, sorry. Oh. Go right in, Philip. Yeah, um, I'm Philip. I play Colbrast One Arm, a Orland Thunderous uh, Wolf Pirate, although the, that has been uh, disputed, but we'll see about that. And um, I think his main goal now is to get a more imposing nickname. <laughs> Something well, dangerous, you know. And why are you called why are you called one arm? <laughs> Well, I wonder why that would be. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we were introduced to the rules and, you know, saw how fighting goes, um, yeah, Colbrast lost his left arm. He has tried to supplement that by sort of inventing from scratch a totally cool shield with integrated broadsword, but up to now, we haven't actually been fighting anymore. So who knows how that will go? Uh, if, I, if I recall, um, you lost an arm in one of the previous fights and... Garen pretty much won, nearly lost himself uh, yeah. in the fight before that. Well, I lost my arm to yeah. the assassin. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. I had it, I had it under control. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, Philip, why don't you give us a recap of what has gone on last session? Yeah, so mainly we were still on our way to the place of this you know, horrible defeat. Uh, um, and on our way, we met some sable riders who somehow finagled us into helping them to ride a raid on Moonbroth, which is a oasis town or village. Um, and we, we decided to help them um, because we thought, you know, this is, has been occupied by the Lunars. And so we we'll just make sure that none of them left. And um, due to some great piece of strategy. We actually took both villages without even having to use our weapons once. Um, in fact, there was no one there except a few older people and women and children. Um, so was the, was the village filled with loot and, and awesome treasures? Oh yeah, it was awesome. Uh, if you like, you know, horses and cattle and stuff like that. But otherwise it was a total loss. I mean, as a wolf pirate, I must say, this was, I, luckily we didn't have to fight, otherwise it would have been one of the worst raids ever. So we then parted with the Sable Riders who got all the tracks and beasts and uh, we got all the cattle and horses and we gave the cattle back to the villagers who sort of tried to get us to stay and protect them, but you know, we've got stuff to do. So at the moment we're off to uh, Swainstown, uh, which is on the way, trying to sell the horses. And if I remember correctly, someone wanted to find out more about the current king of Swainstown. I think it was uh, Gara. Yeah, for our graph, right? Yeah, so we're on the way, and I believe we've already been riding for a bit. And uh, Carl Brast, also being one of the not-so-handy riders, will be very happy when we actually get there. Okay, well, with excellent summary of that. So uh, with that, let's just dive into today's session. Um, what I wanted to do is first uh, jump to our campaign map just to reacquaint, um, reacquaint you all with where you all are. So I'm going to use the exciting share screen function. One of these days I'll actually 
spend the time to work with how we map things on this, but this should be fine. Is it showing up? Yep. yep. Okay, so you guys are right now maybe about um, 10 kilometers or so uh, northeast of Swenston. Okay, and you can see down on the bottom here, there's a scale on this map, 0, 4, 8, 12, 15, 20 kilometers. So that puts you, you can get a, an idea. You're basically uh, near that outer village uh, from Swinston, about probably about 50 kilometers away to the southeast of Swinston is Hender's Ruin. That's where you guys were planning to head to. Um, so that's about two days travel to the southeast of where you are. But you guys are approaching Swinston. Let me get out, unless anybody still wants to look at the map, let me get out of the share screen function. Is that okay with everyone? Good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Swenston's out on the eastern border of Sartar. And when you guys cross the, the, the river, to get near where those villages are, you move out of the, the very, very dry step and start moving into fertile farming land. So if, if you can imagine, this is an area where there is enough water around Swenston for farming of grain and fruits. Uh, this is the kind of area that would have warm summers and cold winters and I, I I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting a good Northern European equivalent because it's not terribly uh, European, but I'm gonna give an example that only NISC will be aware of. It's a lot like Cle Elam. <laughs> okay. All right, or, or Alturas or, or, or places like that. So it's, it's basically um, in a lot of areas right east of a mountain chain where you have a, a mountain chain and then to the, uh, um, past the mountain chain, you have a, a dry area. You still have a fertile strip east of that mountain area because you get all the runoff from the mountains um, for at least a while. And the, the, what was that? You don't get, you don't get the, the rain like you would on the other side. You don't, get the, you don't get the heavy rain that you get on the other side of the mountains, but you still, it's good for farming because you still have a lot of water coming off the mountains. Um, snow runoff and what uh, and whatnot, but you know basically uh, past Swinston, you you start getting into the pine and oak hills of Sartar, and after spending you know the better part of a year in in New Pavis and Prax, uh, Sartar looks awfully darn lush. Even the eastern drier part of Sartar looks awfully darn lush, and and. Uh, one thing is a wolf pirate, Colbrest, mm -hmm. uh, who maybe, let's put Colbrest up on your screen. Yeah. Uh, but uh, one of the things you know as a, as a wolf pirate is, it's a lot better usually to raid uh, lush green areas than dry uninhabited areas. So this is already an improvement. You know, I was I was suggesting that you might also want to put your name, Colbrest One Arm. Oh, sorry, yeah, that, that one. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, only on one arm. Is the picture. Normal. <laughs> Just a second. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not the cool new nickname you want to go for. Philip Glass, <laughs> Glass Man. <laughs> too too, too minimal. <laughs> So anyways, you all um, travel across the, um, uh, the valley here. And it's, you know, it's farmland. It's, it's you know, you've got, we, oh, it's, it's after the harvest now, but you've got fields, you've got grazing area for cattle. And you can see the um, up ahead, uh, in between these two rivers, you've got the city of, of, of Swinston. And it's, it's surrounded by uh, six meter high granite walls built out of big blocky ashlar masonry. You know, it's a pretty impressive site, especially after, you know, compared to places like Moonbroth uh, or whatnot. And there are um, 
there were a number of, of gates around the wall. And of course the gates are guarded here. And this is not a place that uh, like Moonbroth, you would be able to raid with 12 people and, and have a hope to heck uh, to survive. This is, this is a town that was, is clearly been built uh, to be a shield against nomads and against the raids. So, and, and, and Kala, in, in all the centuries that uh, there has been Sw uh, Swinston, the nomads have never managed to gain this place. It's just, you know, it's part of the reason that you guys don't do that many raids into Sartar. It's, it's this big, heavy, fortified city on the eastern, uh, on the eastern gate into the mountains. Yeah, they like to hide behind walls, so... They're cowards, yep. but that's okay. So Swenston itself, you guys um, all uh, head on in, and it's you know it's an open city um, and and trading, and they they charge. They want to know what you guys are bringing to the city. Um, We're going to try and sell some horses. And That's right. How many horses do you have? Uh, well, we Fourteen, have I believe. We right? have three that want people want to keep. So we have that will give us twelve and a donkey. Twelve horses and a donkey. Yeah. So you're here as horse traders. Yep. Yep. Unless you're interested in zebras, I have two zebras. So <clears throat> they're going to charge you. Um, uh, a toll on entering into the city mm -hmm. of 12 lunars. Okay. Who's got the house of the white bull purse? I do. Good. Yes. 12 lunars for the group. Yeah. 12 lunars for the group. Really for the horses is the deal, right? Because we're. Yep. It's basically, it's, it's, it's basically, um, uh, uh, a toll on entering in with trade goods. Yeah, it won't be taxing us afterwards then. Oh, oh, they'll tax you every time they. <laughs> During. <laughs> Pretty sure they will. <laughs> they'll be taxing you every chance they can. Um, yeah. You know, somebody's got to pay for these mercenaries. And these big walls. And these big walls. Mm -hmm. On the other hand. Um, uh, you all head in, and 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 Johnston or a Swinston is a, is is built on basically the same um, scheme as uh, uh, New Pavis is. You know, you've got a central market, a big central market. You've got um, a public and temple complex where there's the temples to Orlanth and Rinalda and 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 the other Lightbringers gods and nice, big, straight main streets. Uh, the area within the wall itself is about 25 hectares. So imagine it's basically about 500 meters by 500 meters. Hmm. So not a very big area. It's not a very big city, mm -hmm. uh, but it is, a, it, you know, it is a, a city city and uh, let me just give you a few other very basic things here. You know, the, the, the buildings in the town are, ba are pretty much all, uh, all one or two stories. Most of them are made out of either adobe or stone. Ju again, just like in New Pavis. So the, the, the picture bef behind Neil is pretty right. The only difference is that more, most of the roofs are tiled so that it can drain rain and snow yeah. off the side of it. Other than that, it's basically the same architecture, which isn't surprising because it's the same people that made it. It's not that far away, really. No, it's not really that far away. Uh, so let me just look at one other thing. Um, the key amenities in the city are, it's got an important market for trade, it has uh, temples to all the Lightbringer gods, as well as to uh, Humat, Stormbull, Waha, Yularia, and Yomalia. 
Uh, the most important goddess in this in the city and in the area is is obviously, and who has the finest temple is Ernalda, because of all the farmers around. Uh, and the city also has. Let me just double check this. Yes, it does. The city also has two baths. Oh, two public that's, baths. That's great because I mean, at, at home you just. You're just in the sea every day, all the time. Yeah, and exactly. Here, here it's horrible. I, I mean, you can't, you know, it's... Well, uh, and, and public bathing is a, a normal thing for sardorites. Um, you know, there, uh, public baths are normally associated with either the temples of Eularia or of Shilana or Roy. Um, and all baths, uh, baths typically include areas for hot water and steam. They don't segregate their bathing areas by gender. Um, but on the other hand, the baths are expected to be places for bathing and, uh, not for other activities. Um, so, uh, but it's, you certainly, no one has had anything even and resembling a, a bath in the week or so that it's taken it to get across uh, Prax. The Praxians don't bathe, by the way, because why would you? <laughs> we noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good thing I'm riding high on my llama. It's less stinky that way. My yeah. llama smells worse than I do. Doesn't oh, it does have to rise up, the smell. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm sure that the llama is stinky. I'm not sure it's as stinky as the bison. Well, oh, that's true. That is true. Yes. So, tell me your guys' plan. What do you want to do here in Swinston? Uh, I want to sell the horses first, if we can. To help pay for what we're going to have to do here. And um, visit a temple. Yeah. Oh, yes, oh, okay, so what I'm going to do is let's, let's, um, let's basically break this down into three tasks, it sounds like. You, you're, you're going to want to um, sell your animals. Mm -hmm. You want to you're going to want to go to a a, a uh, temple and you're going to want to have some sort of accommodations. Sure. So let's start with the horses. Who is going to be the person attempting to bargain with all of the Isseries horse merchants? Mm. Oh, that's certainly not me who thinks horses they're okay-ish, but no. Who would I would think that's got to be Nisk with your powers of persuasion. Okay. Your golden tongue. Yeah, I'm the golden tooth, all right. Yeah. Golden tongue. Um, yeah, I guess it'll have to be me. I mean, I actually think um, she's not here yet. That's the problem. But I actually just, thought. I, I think she just joined. Oh, did she? Excellent. Maybe yes. perfectly in time. Hoorah. Hi. Hi Mom. Hello. <laughs> Molly Monster. <laughs> so yeah, three sorry. Next. Um, I open my iPad in right now because my computer says 20 more minutes for update. Ooh. Oh. God, I love it. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Well, um, the characters, the rest of your, your party wants to sell the horses. And if I recall, Gina actually has the bargain skill. I have, s s um, uh, sorry, I have to um, fix my iPad. I'm, uh, it, it falls apart. It's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one moment. I have not bargain. It's all a Evaluate, little bit right? There's a bargain skill. Do you I have bargain 20. So actually, I have bargain 30. So it is not that high. Okay, compared to the other character who says there is no bargain skill, there's only evaluate. Yeah, okay. No um, give me one second. Let me get the dices out. And then I will also fix the screen. You have to have your thumb against it? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. It's, That's okay. I'm using an iPad. Uh -huh. And this iPad has not the thing attached which holds it up right now because yeah, it's too dark. So that's the reason why I just put up 
I'm just trying to put a stack of books there. Okay, I can roll the dice before I do this. So bargain. Uh, I rolled a 37, but I have only a 30. Okay. And you're uh, the person who is uh, looking over your horses, who can def who can afford to purchase the horses. And that's one of the difficult things is you got to find a, a horse merchant that can actually pay you for all of this. He's looking up and down the horses. Um, and let's roll some dice here to see what sort of fine observations he makes. His, he, he, he observes that, well, you know, these, these horses, they have pulled Joni markings on them. So we didn't take them from Paul Joni. We took them from, from Praxians. So yeah, I'm sure you're an honest guy and, and, and wouldn't do such things like this, but um, there are a lot of Paul Joni in this, this um, area. And I, you know, I can take them off your, I can certainly, you know, I think we can do something about it, but I can't pay full, um, uh, full Gilder for these. I, I really can't. I, Really, I'm not going to be able to pay full gold. Let me let me tell you. Let me make you an offer. And uh, he looks carefully over at the at them, frowns a little bit. Um, I have this feeling he also looks at us very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> Look, at these pumpkins have no idea what they're doing. So uh, he. How many are there? There's 12 horses. Yes, um, yep. 12 horses and a mule. He offers you 400 lunars for the lot. Which seems pretty brief. I mean, he's pointing out a lot of problems. Not, that's not a, that's about two thirds of the normal price. That's a significant discount. Yeah. Well, he says they're they're as far as the Poljoni are concerned, and the Poljoni are members of the Swinston Ring here. Um, and there are there are Poljoni bands in this area. As far as they're concerned, these these are going to be stolen animals. And these animals, look look at them. I mean, I don't know how well you know your horse flesh, um, but yeah, look at these animals. And he points out some problems that they have, some problems with the hoofs. Uh, uh, but so I know horses. Show them on. Roll against your animal, Ornisk, and then let Gina talk. Yep, go ahead while I'm rolling. Um, I mean, I, I show him how nice they look, how, how nicely brushed their manes are, and uh, they're very, very solid horses and very gentle, you know, and some of them are really trained. I, well, I, will, I, I didn't say a fumble with my body. No, 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 no believe me. Believe me, he wouldn't be offering, if you fumbled, he wouldn't be offering you 400 lunars. Um, yes. Make an animal lore. I don't make my animal lore, by the way. I can make my riding, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Animal lore? No, let's see animal lore. Um, <laughs> I had 15 and I rolled a 19. It's, it's not fair oh. today. <laughs> you're, not, you're not helping here. I mean, he's making some pretty good points. He's, he says, look, I'm not trying to rip you off here, but um, I'm not going to be able to get full, um, full gilder for, for these animals. I'm offering you 400, 400 lunars for the lot of them. Mm. So Nisk actually thinks it's pretty reasonable because it's basically, you know, money we found, it's found the money we got on the way <laughs> as we got it, as we think about it. Um, so I'm okay with taking it. I know it's, I know he's got a great deal out of it, but I'd rather not have the people asking us where we got all this stuff from. Yeah. I agree with Nisk here. 400 is a fortune. 400 is so, the amount to, that would support five 
um, free people or five free households for a year. It's a fortune. It is, it is a lot of money. Oh, I, that's fair I enough. Just, yeah. Right, look at the idea we stole them. It does, that's uh, impugning our honor. We, we, I would like we to make them pay more. But if we, we can't, we can't. Pick your battles. <clears throat> These are wise words, Nisk, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we'll do it. We'll go get a place to stay, and then we'll... Okay, so so 400 Lunars is a lot of cash. Um, I, I know you actually, I think Nisk actually possesses more resources than 400 Lunars, but 400 Lunars even would be a fair amount of your personal wealth, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. So <clears throat> that is that is a lot of of cash and normally what do people that have been living uh, have been traveling through crappy de desert drinking stale warm water and eating dried bread and, uh, and tack for a week what do they do when they suddenly get a windfall of money donate it to the temple well that's the first question now <laughs> that is the first question is are you going to give are you going to give some portion of this and offer sacrifices to the gods? I am. Uh, what I'm going to do is dole it out to the people who get the money out of it, and then they can do what they like. But I'm going to definitely go to the temple and donate. Now, you already got, um, I'm pointing here at Garen. Garen already got two good horses out of this deal. He got a really good rate out of it. And Gina got a horse out of the deal. Right? So, yeah, but I threw my mule in. I'm sorry. I you threw did. My mule you did. In. You're right. Okay. So, oh, sorry, that's right. There was a meal. Did you throw away the meal? Yeah. Yes. Uh, give yourself 30 more lunars as part of that package. Okay. Because the mule is actually mule. not stolen. <laughs> you get full price on that. Okay, so um, everyone except Garen gets 86 lunars. Woo! Here's income. I'm I'm throwing a party for the dead with a lot of food and so on. Oh wait, no, no let me subtract twelve off six. Um, I will pay for Garen just because I'm a nice guy. Everybody gets eighty four lunars. See, yeah, you can, I, I, I can you see the characters sitting around doling out. Yeah, but noise. wait, wait a minute. How did that work? This, this, come on. This isn't. A, this is not very transparent. What did you pay Garen for? I paid for Garen's um, entrance to the city because he had no money. Oh, I thought that was from our communal white... Well, yeah, yeah. no money. No it's money from this transaction. Thing. It's the same thing, right? Effectively, I, I took it out of the four... Out of the 400, I took out the amount it cost us to get into the city. So I changed what I divided into people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Makes sense. And then I charged a small percentage interest based on hand. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we won't forget. But I got 40, I got 82 and all of you, and you got 84. Except I have you. so much, I have so many lunar, so I'm not even sure what to do with them right now. So one or two extra. Well, let me tell you some things you can do with it. First off. Oh. First off, the most appropriate thing is always to give at least a tenth to your yeah. protective god. Um, the best thing you can do to give something to the, your god is to go to the various um, animal stalls near the, the temple district and buy an animal to sacrifice and have a big, nice religious meal. Yeah, that's a win-win situation, really, isn't it? It is a win-win situation. Mm. You know, all the priests... That, that's what I suggested. I threw a party for the dead. Okay, so you're going to go and add... Uh, I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you a, 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 a full range of, of feasts or, or, or sacrificial animals that you can offer here, people, and what their approximate price is. If you want to go for the very low end... For the very, very low end, you could spend one clack, that is one twentieth of a clack, <coughs> and you could offer a chicken to the gods. The gods are is not it, I'm sorry, I said Walk. party. They, well, exactly, I'm just saying, that's the very low end. A pig, 
one pig is two loners. If you wanted to, you could buy four whole pigs, you know, put them on sticks and, and have a rotisserie of four pigs each. Four cows. Well, cows are a bit more. Cows, a cow is 20 loners each. I want to have a real party. So I'm spending- And a sheep, my... just, just the last bit, because you know how good grilled lamb is. Yeah. A whole lamb. lamb. Not a whole lamb is three lunars. Yeah, but the lamb is a baby sheep. Well, that's right. A whole sheep is three lunars. A whole yeah, sheep. Yeah, so we have mutton, and mutton needs a little bit more preparation. How we about have to soak lamb? it in buttermilk and so on. You know, the great thing about this, Jada, is with most temples, you buy the animal, you prepare it there, then the priests sacrifice it. They're, the temple staff prepare it and you get a nice meal and the benefit of a happy God. Yeah, uh, it sounds like some nicely barbecue roasted pigs. All right, so you tell me how much you want to spend. I'm spending 20 lunars for a good party with pig and booze and everything to make the dead happy. Okay. All right, so we have over at the Arnaldo Temple, we're going to have a feast going on. Um, how about you, Colbrast? There's an Orlanth Temple here. Yeah, yeah, I was just wondering if I can sacrifice anything at the baths, but probably not, so I have to go to the temple. Um, I think we like um, lambs, many of them. Okay, how much you want to spend? Um, I think 20 lunas sounds about right. Oh my gosh, you guys are, 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 are the, do you have any idea how happy nope. these priests <laughs> are? Because of course the priests get to eat this meal too. Mm. I, I want to go to the next um, Orlanthi, Nisk. Nisk is because, gonna cow. That's and a, a cow. Yeah. Give so it. that's also, wow. So I just want you guys to mark this out. I want to get an idea of the sort of sacrifices that you guys are preparing. In Kala, there is a small Stormbull temple here as well. Oh, um, are there bisons for sale here? This is I was on... thinking of bi Bob's bison burger could get a, re a reinvention here. So you're going to spend 20, 20 lunars yeah. as well. It's 20 lunars for a meat bison yes and that's all it costs oh, that's nothing lunars. i have so much more than that okay it's, yeah. you can buy a bison and 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 end up with a whole lot of happy storm bulls yeah Fi uh finally garen i and lots am and lots of beer going lots to dip into the uh the white bull money given that Nothing out of this, you know. Don't you have your own money? Other than my horse. You don't uh, have your own money? You can't just dip into the white bull money. I'm mad at it. No. <laughs> Not for your personal sacrifice. Do you want money? I can give you some money. I have all of the white bull money, as you call it, is back in in Pavis because we because it costs us five hundred lunars a season or whatever time to keep the friggin' shrine going. <laughs> if you want to have a little bit of money, I'm, I'm give you some. I'm not you can only you know. hunt a sacrificial beast. Yeah. But, 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 uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, what God is he trying to get the favor of? Humor. Well, why don't you have some money, um, you know, just, we're friends. It's very, it's you very want some money, you, you get some money. It's no problem. That's a, a very honourable and decent thing to do. Honourable in a way that seems to have missed Nisk, a man who is apparently... Strangely, strangely honourable. this white bull, huge money that you expect we have, that we expect yeah. that we have. A mere yeah, anyway. five <laughs> lunars I've sought to... Why <laughs> five lunars? A mere five lunars was all I sought. No, 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 actually, oh, Darren, But it's Darren. a personal gift from me. It's not from a white bull thing. So, so you do now, Nisko, how is this I working? I give you out? a pouch of 20 lunars, Garen. 
Oh, it's no, that's like... far too much. I, I do not need. No, no, no. Not much well. Are we Garen, insist? Go on. Much better. Garen, I, you can have come to my death party. <laughs> I'm yeah, always yeah, slightly yeah. worried that you intend to make me dead at these parties, though, Gina. No, it's not, it's it's with the death people, and you're a Hamakti, so the death one is strong in you, and so on. That so is you true. Can, you will feel I would very be... comfortable. You're dead anyways. I, that is true. I would be honoured to, to join. Um, <laughs> I, I need some space from Nisk right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How yeah, we can the desert can do that to a group, you know. Mm. All right. So what we're going to do here is um, this is going to take several days for the various temples to arrange. Yes, Ankala. Yes, um, because I know this is going to take a while, but I also want to lead. Um, there aren't really any shrines and stuff to the horned man or whatever spirit that actually bound to me. I'm not even sure which it was. Right. Um. I, I do want to lead a shamanic ritual while here. So I'm trying to find some place that will actually suit uh, wherever there is a place of power here. Well, the, what is normal in Sardarite cities um, is a, uh, the polite term is it's, it's the uh, temple to any god. Yeah. Right. So it's a space that can be used for by any god. The um, the the more impolite and mocking term for these places is rent a shrine. I'll um, go to a rent a shrine. <laughs> it's perfect. I don't have any honor. They just I redecorate it. They just redecorate it. Too. Yeah. So I, I buy some stuff and whatever, and I actually spend some time there while they're actually preparing the feasts. I think it costs so, like I think it costs like five lunars to rent a shrine. You know, there's probably some guy, some some you know, some old guy, some old dude, uh, Jostalor, who you know is all scruffy. Uh, wears probably just a loincloth, old dude. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes the money. Oh, I'll clean up the altar. I'll clean it up. Nah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it'll be ready for you in time. And <laughs> and and Josh Dolores function is is to basically caretake for the rent shrine. He's played by that, you know, that <coughs> some some random character actor from a uh, Tashira Mafume film, you know, from like uh um uh, uh Yo Jim if you remember the the guy who runs the little tea shop or the rice shop, oh he's yeah, played by those, that guy. Uh, he's played by that guy, you know. Yeah. He's, yeah, exactly. But he takes your money, and and we'll have the renta shrine ready for you. Is there then also something like call a sacrifice or so, what you can order to to get the food or? Well, I any this is how it works in Sardarite towns, including New Pavis. Yeah have oddly not oddly not that far from um where all the main temples are is also the main livestock market and that's because there is a steady business uh constantly with people selling animals to people that want to make a sacrifice to the gods and that is uh, so there is just a a a lively business uh, near the temples of, of folk wanting, um, offering to sell animals that are proper for sacrifice. And, you know, they swear that the animals are clean and pure uh, yeah. and and unpolluted. Unpolluted in every way. Whatever that organic. <laughs> or, organic. Uh, fed only on beer. Only on beer and Arnaldo's own ground. Us. But it, it, it's important to th remember that these temples are not like, you know, modern churches. These temples are, are major players in uh, the running of the city, and they're also major, uh, most of the temples are major landholders and landowners, and these sacrifices are a, a big source of money for them. 
You know, it means that if you're what the white bull shrine to be. Exactly. If you're a priest, you know, you're loving this because it means you're eating meat every day and somebody else paid for it. And they even pay you a little bit to um, uh, do all the sacrifices and you keep the animal after the rest of the animal afterwards, the temple does. And, you know, this is just how temples work. So I, I just want to give that, that, that visual feeling it's 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 lots of animals and you guys are arranging basically uh, the celebrations for the better part of a week it sounds like on clay day there will be a Ernalda uh, day of the dead festival then the next day on Wednesday there will be a, a big Orlanth festival and then near the end of the week on do you want to do it on wild day or on God Day in Kala. Mm, wild day sounds good. Okay, on and then on Wild Day, th there's going to be a shindig at the Renta Shrine. So, yeah, but you see, <laughs> yeah, but you see, I'm doing that as well as the party of uh, the Storm Bulls, because. Oh golly! Oh golly! Yeah. It just it, there's, this is there's... a drunken party at the Storm Bulls after doing the serious stuff at the Renta. So I want to give you guys the feeling that for your characters, it's basically a week-long festival on uh, Bourbon Street in New Orleans. You know, you guys are going, you know, eating your food, eating food and drinking, drinking uh, ceremonial wine and the lot every day for this week. So I am the designated driver. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you do get to enjoy the meat, though, I hope, all the food. All right. You haven't so, given up every pleasure, have you? <laughs> That's the next oh, one. Oh, oh, and, it, and it's lovely. I mean, you start at the Arnalda Temple, and there's the Arnalda priestesses all garbed up as goddesses with their snake dancing. Um, they're... Yeah, Claudia, you can describe. Gina, you describe what goes on in an, uh, at an auto festival. Actually, uh, the, because it's uh, about uh, it's for Takara Tag, there's actually not a lot of snake dancing. They're they're actually all dressed in uh, white cloths, and they're symbolizing ghosts. And we are we are actually doing a a big table. Um, people, people can come by and pray for their ancestors, and uh, so they get food and so on. And uh, I invite everybody to raise a glass. Oh, we're having some mm -hmm. technical yeah. difficulties. So it is a little bit different than a regular in Alden um, celebration. Okay, so Claudia, what I would like you to do is I would like you to make a worship ceremony, a worship roll, and you get to add the following. You get to add plus 10, actually plus 20, because you made a large sacrifice of living things. Uh, another plus 10, so let's say plus 30, because it's on a minor holy day. And this is a major temple, so add another uh, plus 20, all in all, give yourself plus 50 to your chance to do a worship ceremony. So I have 110 now on worship. Given the way you've rolled, you should be able to fail. 55. Okay. Do you, are you missing any magic points? Or is there rune points? Uh, uh, yes, I'm missing actually two rune points. Okay. Would you please roll 1d6? Give me a second. And this, guys, is how you get your rune points back. Mm. It's sorry. This is the procedure. I, what? I rolled you two. Okay, you get two back. You're fine, uh, guys. This is how you get rune points back when you need them in a, in an ongoing adventure, i.e., mm. when it really matters. Mm. Uh, otherwise. The, the easier way is, is that we just automatically roll for how many you get bought back season by season. And then when sacred time, the end of the year, 
you get them all back automatically. Unless, of course, it's really important that you have all your, your, your points in sacred time, and then we make you roll for it. So it's basically, we go through this exercise only when, it's, when it narratively matters. Is there also something about if rune priests uh, do their worship rituals, uh, they gain uh, increased power gain rolls? You get a power gain. Sense? Yes, they get power gain roll checks. That is correct. Yeah. You, uh, everybody who does this gets a power gain roll check. And a rune priest gets a better chance than normal. Of yeah, going up. plus 20%. Yeah, 20% yeah, higher. Yeah. So Cobrast, let's roll for you to see if you're going to get your pal check, because I don't think you've spent any uh, rune points, have you? No, I have spent no rune points. Um, okay, so power times 12? Or? No, roll against your worship ceremony. Well, we're combining our ceremonies together, right? So we get yep. the bonus of my cow plus his pigs and everything. Yep. You guys all get a big bonus there, but um, I, you still get to roll independent, uh, independently. Yeah. You, you, mean, you mean worship we can have at five? <clears throat> What's okay. your magic bon bonus? Uh, zero. Okay, well, you get to add 50 to this. Okay, that's good. <laughs> this is the pro. Okay, so ga in game, let me explain that the re the, there's an in game mechanic for throwing tons of, of, of stuff at it. Is if you notice, this, you get you're getting big bonuses, a big enough ceremony, and the gods are going to pay attention. So I'm giving you guys, you and uh, Nisk, both a actually yours. Um, yeah, I'm going to give you guys a plus fifty. Can I use a meditate skill? You can use that to increase your worship, right? Yes, you can. You can augment with meditation. Okay. Hmm. I will try and do that. So are you going to go for a cold breast? Yeah, I rolled a 90. So I, I just eat and drink and have a good time. Which is also which is, fine. Which is fine because I'm, I'm, you know, I don't really use a lot of magic anyway. So just sometimes. <laughs> I succeed on the, my meditate and I am down a point, by the way. All right. So that means that you are plus 70 to your worship skill. Okay. And I succeed, not with a special or anything, but my skill is well over 100. So roll a d6. Six. That's how many you would have gotten. And I back, also but... sacrifice mm. one power to get a spell. Okay, so reduce your power by one. <clears throat> okay, let's go to you, Garen. Oh. Okay, Garen, your gift was not quite so impressive, was it? No, it was only uh, two pigs. It was two pigs. So I'm going to give you, and were you participating in the Humak ceremony or the Arnaldo one? Um, Humak is not present at the Arnaldo one. Yeah, so it'll be, uh, it'll be at the Arnaldo one. Okay. Good choice. So you only get a bonus of 20 points. But he's cutting the, sh he is actually helping to cut the meat. Uh, so 20, and uh, that is a 12. So that is a success. Hoorah! Are you down any uh, room points? No, no debt room points down. But you can still get your power gain check. Yeah. Awesome. Finally, Inkala. Yes. I know you haven't used any. I'm only going to have you roll. Uh, do you have worship um, Storm Bowl only, right? Yeah. So add 50 to that. Uh, I do actually, I am actually down one room point because I spent one on, on uh, our grant. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I'm actually down one. Yeah, that, that's a success. Okay. Well, if you're down one and you get 1d6 back, you get it back. Yeah. You can roll to see how much, how, how much more, but yeah, you got them all back. I got five back, but I only have one, so. All right, so do you guys get an idea of what the, um, so we know your religious ritual activity and the priests since Swinston, they all, all of the priests are friendly with you all. You've all proven to be good, pious people. You, you, you know, you all have been drinking and eating with the, uh, the Lightbringers priests for the better part of a week. So 
if I recall, there were other things that you guys wanted to do in the city besides sacrifice. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the cat tries to steal my chocolate. Of course she does. Um, go to the baths, obviously, and listen to the gossip. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to do, we'll, we'll deal with the gossip. Uh, I just want to ding you guys because I'm enjoying dinging you guys money. Um, it sounds like you're staying basically a week in Swinston. Yep. Okay. Uh, are you guys going to stay in a shared room? or a private room? Ooh. I'm staying in the temple. You could stay in the temple. That is, temple has accommodations. You can stay there. They're not that, I mean, that, to be honest, the temple accommodation is probably about as good as most inns. Probably follow Gina's lead then. You know, you can stay on a corner of the floor in the Humak Temple. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, let's do that. Properly ascetic and miserable experience. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. With, with people sitting around, you know, um, uh, praying and chanting to the God, of law, uh, the God of war and death with nice incense all the time. Oh. You, you'll sleep like a baby. That's my idea of a holiday. Exactly. <laughs> talking about talking about death and severance and, and termination. Oh, oh it's it's you're it's, speaking my language. Exactly. Uh, how about you, Gina? You're on the floor of the Arnaldo Temple? No, I'm looking for a nice crypt. Holly, can you let my chocolate? <laughs> Sorry. Please. <laughs> He already, I had to bribe her already. This one. Do you want to so. sleep in the charnel fields? Yeah, I think uh, the, I'm pretty sure there's a nice cold crypt or so. Well, there's a necropolis. It's not a crypt. Yes. Yeah, then I take the ne necropolis. All it's right, like so, home. Yeah, so she sleeps over in the in the charnel house, the charnel grounds. Uh, how about the two Orlanthi? I mean, I don't know if they'll give us good rooms. If they want us to sleep on the floor, I'm not going to sleep on the floor here. I don't think. I think we'll go to the inn. Or, or the I think we'll get an inn, yeah. Okay, a shared room at the inn will cost you seven lunars for the week. Okay. A private room will be 35 lunars each. A private room each? Yes. So shared means any other folk around as well, or, or how many and, uh, It basically there? means it's as it is they 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 have bed beds. Why do we? Why do we, we get a private bed, or, or are the beds shared as well? Uh, probably the beds are shared as well. I mean, this is this is the ancient world. They're they're, they're they put it basically uh, yeah. where. Members of a group traveling together can, can share a room. That's what we'll do. Why don't we get a room and mm. see? Uh, I don't know if you're going to stay in the same one in color or what you're going to do. I'll join you guys. I'm not shy. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, you're going to stay in the temple still? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if you two give pay 10 each, I'll pay 15. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. So look at that. You guys get to stay. And, and the last question I get is for ends, I'm going to give you two options. I actually, yeah, I'm going to give you two options. Uh, I see a cat's ear in the. <laughs> Here, Holly, two get a bit more ears. chocolate. Here, please eat it. Please, I only want to tell you, Jen. She's eating the white Easter egg chocolate, the good stuff. Oh, that's not good. So there's 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 one in one option is a a um, a reasonably swanky in that caters to merchants. 
All right. Now, the nice thing about this is they can take care of your, your remaining animals there. It's basically like a caravanserai, right? So there's places for you all to stay. It caters to merchants. It's got, it's actually got pretty good food, um, mm -hmm. but not like that's been a problem for you guys. Um, and it's got pretty good, it's got pretty good wine, pretty good booze. The other one is a little bit rougher. It's an inn that, uh, <laughs> or at least traditionally, um, in it's it's a it's an inn that is connect connected to the uh, Sartre's cult called Joe's, and you've got to be uh, uh, and and Joe's the accommodations aren't so good. <laughs> I think that do we, do we get the replay? As soon as she heard really? about the poor accommodation, she was <laughs> off. <laughs> and exactly. Not staying anywhere. Crap. No. So, so basically, the caravanserai or Joe's, and you get different type of gossip depending on what it is. What do the spirits look like? You both of them. Uh, Joe's actually us? has a guardian spirit. <laughs> She's. Hmm. Joe's has a guardian spirit there at the door. And the okay. guardian spirit of Joe's um, has an ax, yeah. a hood, and is drinking blood. Oh, interesting. Sounds like an interesting place. And the, 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 the Joe's guardian spirit um, is, is there and it is watching everyone come in and everything come in. And it's a powerful spirit. The other one doesn't have a spirit. It's a caravanserai. It's there's there maybe some small spirits flitting around the place, but nothing like the uh, the spirit of Joe's bouncer. But there's a Joe's also in Tavis that we're familiar with, right? Well, and that's a question. Are you a member of Joe's? Do you have the tattoo on your finger? Are you a Joe's boy? I'm a Joe's boy. I'm a Joe's boy. All right. So the thing about Joe's is it's a it's an inn or or public house that also during the lunar occupation more or less served as a uh, the same sort of role as uh, uh, IRA supporting Irish bars in parts of the US. It, it, it's basically, you know, in order to be able to stay at Joe's and to, to drink at Joe's, somebody's got to have the tattoo. I probably do then, because if I look at when, you know, I became, you know, initiated, I was there at that, it's the same area, the temple and everything before I got exiled. So I think I do. Okay, well then write that down. Now the thing about being a, an initiate of Joe's is there aren't a whole lot of obligations mm -hmm. for being a member of the jo the cult of Joes, but I'm going to read out what they are. Okay. Hey, somebody is an initiate of Joes. Hurrah! <laughs> Additional cults. Jo. Cheering GM is never a good sign. <laughs> sure have to get. Got to give them a uh, a few things, right? Yeah. Oh, exactly. Um, members can join if they pass the entrance requirement of being a Sartar citizen, so a Sartarite, um, a member of a Sartarite, or a close friend of a citizen, and if they swear to uphold the rules of the cult. And the rules are that members must always respect the hospitality of Joe. So inside a Joe's um, inn, the rules of hospitality must be strictly adhered to. Okay. And we all know the rules of hospitality, right? If somebody is does being a member of the club. Yeah. It's the same as in Pendragon. You know, a guest um a a a guest is absolutely under the protection, no stealing from fellow guests, no um nothing dishonorable. You protect um another guest, even if it's your enemy, uh, et cetera. Uh, always respect the hospitality of Joe and never fight among themselves or allow others to fight inside the inn. 
When members meet and know or notice that they are members, they must stop whatever they are doing and have a round for Joe. Even if this is a short, a short sip of water upon a, a savage battlefield. And they must occasionally stand guard duty and perform other tasks in the inn. They must never forget uh, who offered them refuge in their time of need. The, once these things are sworn to, then a member receives a tattoo on his right little finger. Showing the scar will get him automatic entry past the porters of any Joes thereafter. Uh, the final other thing is benefits of the cult are that those uh, which the far from home most need a safe bed, friends, and a warm meal. The cult will guarantee its members at least a bowl of porridge and a tankard of ale or wine and bed in the hay anytime they go to any Joe's. There is even sometimes healing to be found or at least a change of bandages and some surgery if necessary. These are minimums though, and the inns usually are able to pay to afford more to their uh, members. And the, the thing about Joe's is, is that people who are members of Joe's are expected to take care of Joe's. So if you are rich and successful and you go, you, you are expected to give some money to Joe's. Okay. If you are poor, you get taken care of by Joe's. So okay. basically it's, it's a Sardarite. This is a Sardarite social institution. Um, and, uh, you know, the people that manage to become chieftains, merchants, or rank, rank, or, uh, ranking cult members are expected to recall who gave them shelter when they were down and out. If they do not, they are said to be visited by dreams, by cult members later, and finally by that spirit that you saw, Joe's bouncer. Well, one thing I will do, though, for staying there is they would all have been, been invited to the temple for the ceremony to take part, partake in the food and stuff there, because that's part of it. I figure this. Oh yeah, they're all light bringers. Yep. So, anyways, you all stay at Joe's, except for Garen and Gina, and and this is a good place for getting. These are all the 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 the, the innkeeper. There is a woman named uh, Treya. Uh, Treya is a former mercenary who is uh, now forcibly retired. From, from fighting because she it was crippled in her. Let me just pull up. Um, let's get some better light here. Because she was crippled in her left leg. Mm, I, I know the feeling. <laughs> so, but she's, she's, you know, a strong athletic woman and there is, so you're welcome in there. There is, uh, there's wine um, and, and food there. And this is a good place for getting information. Okay. It's all the information is of course going to be filtered through the sort of Sardarite who is a member of Joe's, but you can get an idea. Okay. Well, that's what we'll try and do. I don't think there's too much there. Cool. Go and see what's there with the, the temple being destroyed and get, maybe someone saw it or was nearby and heard that sort of stuff. It's been a while, but we've not heard it. All right, so what sort of information are you trying to get? Um, I think we're trying to get information on, trying to remember here. Uh, I would say, uh, well, who the king is, what factions are, what the status of the lunars are, um, kind of some semi big picture things if we can on the series things would be useful but they or you know how the lunars are doing or how hopefully badly because this is a definitely an anti-lunar area i'm gonna let you all try to make a i've got a couple of morsels of info i i, I can feed out but i'm gonna make you make an intrigue roll uh -oh. or something like that but i'm gonna give you a plus 40 each okay i might have a chance Ooh. I roll a zero, zero, 003 with a plus 40. It might be a critical. It's a special. What's your skill? I'm looking for it. Uh, what'd you say its name was? Intrigue. Intrigue. How to communicate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's not a critical, but yeah, it's a special. A special. Wow. How about you, Nisk? Success. 27. How about you, Colbrast? 
Nope. Anybody else trying here at, at, at Joe's? I'm not there. So you're welcome to come. I mean, it's, you don't have to only be in the Carmel houses. It's, Do you like? I don't. I don't have the mark, and I'm from Australia. But I can get you in. I don't have the mark. Mm. Oh, Brett doesn't have the for, mark. I'll have come along for a meal. So I mean, I'll try it, but my intrigue is, uh, yeah, not even, not even close. Are you going to Gina or not? The food in the Nala temple is better. It is. In the moment, I don't know. I, don't, I, I mean, if we, if we plan to go on with our adventure, yes, I will come. But otherwise, I do not plan to go there. Why should I? Totally reasonable. All right. You guys actually get, um, there's a lot of gossip going on at Joe's because there's a lot of excitement. You know, there was the Dragon Rise. There's all sorts of speculation on it. Um, and, and of course, that's what they all refer to it as, is the Dragon Rise. And the other big thing that, they, that people want to talk about is the new Prince of Sartar. The, 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 tri, the, the tribal leaders and, and, and temples acclaimed Kalar Starbrow as the new Prince of Sartar. Um, after she defeated the Lunars at the Battle of Dangerford um, a few weeks. She's Keldon too, right? Isn't she? She's Keldon. She's a local girl. So let me pull up that map there again. <laughs> okay, so do you see you've got, we've got Swinston here, right? Swinston? Yep. yep. And then way over in the southwest, you have this big squiggle. Yes. Yeah. All right. There's a little squiggle that looks kind of like a, um, uh, I don't know, like a tadpole or something. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That is, um, from the stories you get, that is physically where the true dragon is. And that's about how big it is, they say. The other squiggle is the area of total devastation from when the dragon uh, rose. And one other thing I want to, so if you see here, I've now moved the map, there is a road in red that goes straight north. If you see where it crosses that river that says flats, there's a little village um, right on the, the south side of the river where the bridge, the road goes over it. Yep. That's mm -hmm. Danger Ford. So that's where there was a battle, a big battle a couple of weeks ago. Um, where after the Dragon Rise happened, what you can get is, is that most of the Lunars, and I'm going back to the map one more time, most of the Lunars were at a temple as part of a gigantic lunar temple ceremony that had most of the lunar soldiers and all of the priests and high muckety mucks of the lunars all gathered at a temple that was located exactly where that tadpole squiggle is. Hmm. It's not there anymore. And with the dragon rise, when that happened, the pretty much well the vast bulk of the lunar army, the lunar college of magic, the lunar priests, and all of the forces that made the lunars the most powerful um, uh, player in Dragon Pass was eaten in an afternoon. And when that happened, uh, the many of the tribes rebelled and overthrew the remaining lunar uh, garrison. The, the Lunars tried to gather what they could and see if they could conquer Sartar before all the tribes rebelled. And that's why there was, a, uh, at the Battle of Dangerford, that, that's where Kalar Starbrow um, uh, led her Sardarites to victory over the Lunars and the Lunars have retreated. And so Sardar is free 
of lunar occupation, and it has a new prince call, uh, named uh, Kalar Starbrow, who was the leader of the big rebellion 10 years ago. Um, and she, uh, prior to becoming the prince, she was the queen of the Keldon tribe. And the Keldon are the tribe right outside of Baldhome. And they, so if you look to the west of Swinston in the mountains, you have this city called Baldhome. That is the capital of Sartar. And the, the valley right outside of that where you have the river and you can see a bunch of little villages. That's the lands of the Keldon tribe. So what, with that, I'm going to give you guys, based on your successes, three follow-up questions that I'll answer. Well, and obviously this is to the group, so I'm not asking this directly. This is, I, I would like to know what their view of Argrath and the White Bull is. Uh, what's what's the feeling? Me. Yeah, is that? Sounds good to me. Cool. Okay. Well, one. The general reaction is that only the Poljoni like him. Uh, the Poljoni and and their Dundielos um, allies. And the Dundielos, the, the, the Poljoni and the Dundielos are now in the area called the Dundielos Valley. And that's the reason I kept this up is, is that I want to keep this map in case they're uh, up in case there are questions directly related to that. And do you see to the southwest of Swinston, there's something called the Dundielos Valley. And it's a big, um, a big fertile valley, which is where uh, it's currently occupied by the Poljoni and their Dundielos allies. They support our graph, but the other tribes around Swinston um uh, uh, generally support Keller um or even very strongly support Keller uh to the extent like the um to the extent that uh they are members of the Keldon tribe because like she's she's the leader of the Keldon tribe. Of Argrath, the general view of Argrath is that he is um uh, isn't he the half barbarian warlord who rules the Praxians? It's pretty close. Cool. Uh, I didn't see Callus Starbrow summoning a dragon. Um, well, he's the he's the he's the half barbarian warlord that's that's out in 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 Pavis. Um, we hear that he, you know, he 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 he's a, he rules as a Praxian con, doesn't he? Um, that's Kinda, I don't think that um, Argos summoned the dragon. No, they think Keller did. Oh, she didn't. We were witness to that. She did not. I'm gonna have to go and I'm gonna have to go and cool down outside. Oh, I'll to be, be to be honest, I'll be on the this... verge of punching somebody by this point. Now, keep Argos. in mind, Argos. this Argos. is just no fighting in Joe's, man. I know. That's why. That's why I'm going outside. I'm going outside to basically chew my fingernails but, off. But I was just going to say, I mean, it all in. We, we can't really be sure that Argrath summoned the dragon. He, he was just smoking houses yeah, all the time. Cold it's one it's who, happened. Cold blast. Why do you think what we were guarding? No fighting in Joe's. This isn't... That I saw the spirit of that dragon and I heard it speak. I know it was speaking to speaking to Argrath. Yeah, I know. I've also spoken to Kalon, and then decided one way or the other. You know, you know. Ye of little faith. Exactly. Yeah. Ye of little faith. Okay. You disappoint um, me, Cold are there, it, Okay, I have another question. Unless anyone other has one, I want to know. Um, so, are there any areas in Sardar itself that are still being held by lunars? And if uh, so, the 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 lunars have been mostly kicked to um, north of the creek. The, remember where Dragon, uh, Drag, uh, sorry, Danger Ford is? Yeah. That's called the creek. So north of Danger Ford is still under lunar rule. South of Danger Ford 
um, is not under lunar rule. Although there may very well be lunar bands and whatnot behind it. Um, you know, sure. that's all. But as an organized force, they're not, you know, they're correct. You know, they're... Anybody else have another question they want to ask? Last question, anyone? Would it would be useful if we could find out about the, the there's a third, isn't there another prince in Sata? Um, I thought there's, there's Argrath, we now know one is Kalast Argrau. Isn't there another? We can see, um, see if they know anything about that. But do we, yeah, that, that's one option. Also, uh, are, would it be interesting to know if there's any rumors coming out of, um, what's the name? Hender's Ruins. Yeah. Because yeah. that's where we want to go. That's where we go. Yeah, yeah, and is there like a cesspool of chaos there? Is there a weird glow there? Is there something? True. I'm okay with that. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right. The locals here in Swinston, Henders Ruins about 50 kilometers away, and it's in Prax. It, it's, it's relatively near the um, uh, oasis town of Day's Rest which is called that because it's traditionally where caravans uh, going across Prax spend a full day of rest uh, for their animals before uh, continuing one direction or another. Uh, what most folk know about Hender's Ruins is isn't that where um, Argrath and his Praxians got defeated by the Linners. It is. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We haven't heard of anything out of it since. Uh, not the, not the Joe's boys. They're, they're not merchant. They're not caravan folk. They're, you know, the Joe boys are, are, are very attuned to what's going on in Sartar, but the stuff going on in Prax, not so much. Okay. Well, those are our three main things we can get out. Yeah. So the, the question I have is, that's that's the the you know you guys are popular enough and and Darren didn't start any fights at Joe's, knock on wood. Uh, and is there anything else you all want to do in Swinstown during that week? Um, maybe actually go have dinner at uh, that other place with the ca which was more like a caravanserai. Okay. And try to see if there's information there as. Well, because they are car caravan drivers. Those are going to be Isseri's golden tongue merchants. Yeah, those that's what they do. So is that what you guys want to all do? I'd also like to um, see if I can arrange a riding lesson. Okay. A whole riding lesson. You know, Waha Tall is very happy to try to, to act as your riding tutor. <laughs> yeah, of course, he's still here. Of course he is. Yeah. I, I actually tried to find some information in the temple about the okay make an intrigue nope okay no i like i like my my gray stones so i'm gonna let you uh, in kala i'm gonna let you roll against your intrigue without out a 50 point bonus. Ah, that's gonna be a regular fun. intrigue to see how well you are at schmoozing with merchants. Oh, that's not gonna go well. I almost want to do it and oh, that is not because well. <clears throat> you're not a merchant. You haven't oh. been spending tons of money on things the merchants But I roll a twelve. Is and that a why... success? That is a success because I have fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in the yeah, white a... channel just to, because I want yeah. I, I trust you I trust you alright so what are you trying to get out of them uh, information about um, Hender's Ruins what it's like traveling through there now there's that. a lot they um, the caravans try to now avoid Hender's Ruins even more than usual mm -hmm. um, the, the, the ruins there there's um, uh, there, there's tales of 
um, people seeing loons still on the battlefield. Ooh. Um, there's also tales uh, that it is a that there are unseasonable storms there. Yeah. So <laughs> loons, strange storms. And of course, there are the, the ghosts that always haunt battlefields. So the caravans try to avoid it. They recommend against going there. It's an unlucky place. Yeah. Hmm? I said ghost is always good. So is the plan to, uh, what, what is that? Handle pretty much what everything you wanted out of Swinston. I think so. Then let us let us move it forward. It's no, a no, day. No, no, no. So, sorry, sorry. I okay, have sorry. To, I mean, Swenston is Swenston is a place where I can actually get supplies for my hair and my makeup and so on. Uh, better than a new pavis. Yes. All right, so and maybe maybe I find another person who actually is proper Australian for a servant. You're gonna ditch your guy? You no, so I well. can find another person. Oh. How, about, how, how do you pay him, Gina? <clears throat> With money? Okay. Because I, I thought we were paying a hairdresser. So <laughs> That's just <laughs> my impression. <laughs> Well, you're not going to have time to properly vet a better hairdresser unless you take somebody captive or something, which is unlikely. Okay, uh, but at least I can send Olgor to get uh, more makeup stuff and so on. And it's a good, I mean, no, actually I go alone. I go with him because um, he does actually not know the good stuff from the bad one. All right, so the basic stuff they've got, they've got henna. Mm-hmm. They've got coal, that's that black yes. powder, uh, and they have, and there's even perfume. That's something. And they have, they have maybe some kind of soap for my hair. I will roll that into the price of, um, uh, I basically a daily package. How does this sound? A daily. A, a a daily a daily package there costs half a lunar. I want to have also face oil. Okay, slightly more than half a lunar per okay, day. So how many how days? Long are we how many of these packages do I have to buy? You tell me. Well, How much do you know. I mean, 50 yeah. kilometers, it's not that far. Um, I get a week's worth. So you're going to buy, it, we'll, we'll round it up, four lunars worth of, of, of makeup and perfume. No, I will bargain. I won't have 10 for the price of four. Okay. So let's see. Yes. All right, you get 10 days worth of, of coal and perfume and face oils. Take that, Wrench. How often do you get that in your, your, your games there? Bargaining about face oils. <laughs> That's why we play Rune Quest. Argan, Argan, <laughs> best. All right, so uh, is that everything in Swinston? Gina, anything else? Special henna for the feet. New sandals. I got my henna. Okay. I have enough okay. henna okay. now. Okay. Okay. All right. So from Swenston, it's about a day's travel to Pimper's Block. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and Pimper's Block is basically it. It's it's actually a little bit past the fertile area, and into Prax. And maybe I should show the share the map very briefly. You see this Pimper's block? Yep. And Pimper's block 
what it is, its main function, it's an oasis. It belongs to the, um, the Balkoth tribe. Uh, but it's, and, and its most important thing is this is the place where the Sardarites and the Praxians meet traditionally to exchange captives and hostages. And the downside of that is, of course, this is also the place that the Praxians, the Sardarites meet to sell each other people they took captive. In other words, it's a slave, it's a, it's a slave, mar uh, slave market. Mm. Um, and, and it's worth pointing out, this is a ancient world, Bronze Age thing, and people do take um, people captive in raids and bring them to Pimper's Block and, and trade them. The Praxians usually trade people and captives. They try to trade them for weapons um, and metal goods. Uh, the Sardarites uh, will t uh, trade captives they took in war, and they trade them to the Praxians for, for animals, herds, or, or uh, mercenary service. And, you know, that's, that, that is a doubt. That's part of the dark side of a violent world is that that there are a lot of unpleasant things like that the cult of warland doesn't really like this but uh tolerates it uh, other cults like humat uh and Arnalda could care less um it's one of these evils that that are in general just accepted as part of uh, uh a a violent and dangerous world so i'm gonna assume you guys don't want to spend a ton of time at Pemper's Block. Um, nope. One of the things that one of the folk that the, the 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 tribes that are forbidden from coming to Pemper's Court is the Praxian tribe called the Morocanth. Um, okay. and, and the fear the Sardarites always fear that if the Morocanth are allowed to buy captives, they'll eat them because the uh, Morakanth are, are, are feared to eat people. Oh, I love cool. the Morakanth. What? I love the Morakanth. Yeah, but the, Sar the, the they are banned from, from um, even camping near Pimper's Block. Eat them or, or uh, secretly fix their int. Yep. So- Secretly what? Turn them into animals. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What? Yeah, it describes creatures that are have a certain level of intelligence but never can learn the same way in levels and that's wow, it is really shocking. And they think they're not at this and that look like people and the Morakan say they're not people, but the Morakanth are always accompanied by herds of humans. Okay. Who travel around and do menial things for them and dig in the earth for roots and grubs and insects and such um, to feed the Morakanth. And it's how much of the secrets of the Morakanth would a call in Kala be willing to say, matter of fact, like? Is mm. she willing to give the, the, the thing every Praxian knows? Sure. Every Praxia knows that yes, the Morakanth from time to time, because uh, the uh, the Morakanth humans aren't humans; they're herd men. They're yeah. they're not humans. They're beasts, just like bison are, just yeah. like Hylamas are, just like Impala. And so, of course, on holy days, the Morakanth do the same thing to part of their herd that the bison riders do to some of their bison, which is? It's pragmatic. I mean, it's a pragmatic view, but the problem is that they do sometimes do to their captives, which means that there's been, they have been people. Yes, but they not. are not, as far as the Waha cult and the Aritha no. cult are concerned, they're not people once that's no. happened to them. No. Uh, anyways, -shaped. there is, what is the name of the delicacy, Gina? Mock pork. Has anybody had mock pork? Because they sell mock pork in the stalls and all Praxians eat mock pork from time to time. You never know if you have some of the myths. 
mystery dumplings in your pipe. <laughs> you do not know if it's red. I will never get into the dumplings for the taking land. I wish you told us this before. Yeah, Cold is completely That's... shocked now. Yeah, Cold breast is, you know, I, I'm going to save all my you're money, missing, you're missing buy a butter. ship and go somewhere else. <laughs> I will so, send you the recipe for mystery dumplings at some point. So we can to we I assume you guys spend as little time at Pimper's Block as possible. It's a yes. miserable, awful yeah. place. Uh, and it takes you about a day to travel to the outskirts of Hender's Ruins. I would like to take a short break to pour myself a glass of wine, and sure. then we will jump forward at Hender's Ruins. Okay, just let me pause it. Pausing. Welcome back. I have my wine. Um, we are traveling now from Pimper's Block to Hender's Ruins. That's probably another uh, 30 kilometers or, or more, maybe, maybe 40, uh, almost 40 kilometers. That's a good solid day's travel. Um, and you get to near the, you can see the ruins um, and Hender's ruins are these, is this series of, of almost crystalline um, ruins. It looks like it's made out of some substance like uh, like quartz or even even more crystalline than that. So it's a weird looking thing, and you can you can see the ruins at the twilight. Uh, and not far from Hender's ruins is where you all got your ass handed to you by the Lunar College of Magic and Quim the Chaos Terror. So you'll want to probably camp during the night. Mm -hmm. and then um, go to the battlefield in the morning. Does that sound about right for you guys? Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Any special preparations you all make at your camp in, um, in Prax, um, relatively near the haunted battlefield where Chaos Terror and mind-boggling lunar magic was unleashed upon your side? Right, I think we probably want to have watches. <laughs> just, no. just kind of throw <laughs> it's a thing, you know. It's, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's funny how much more suspicious people get when I describe it that way. Um, I will, I will actually do a ghost watch. I will try to tune myself for the vibration of the ghost and see how far they actually go from the battlefield and where the concentration is. And especially during the night, that's the best time to do that. Okay. Okay, so Gina is volunteering to do the watch for the dead people. Yep. That's her thing. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we'll Sounds good. Um, I'll definitely do take a watch. Hopefully, um, Garen and Colbrast and Kala can do. Yeah, I, I have a permanent second sight, so I, I see all the spirits all the time. There so, are there are spirits active here. Yeah. There are a lot of spirits active here. Um, and then as you get towards, you look towards the ruins, um, or sorry, towards the battlefield, there are lots of spirits. It's, it's, it's an area, uh, it, it's like moon broth. It's a, um, it's what you call a spirit vortex. It's an area that it's very easy for spirits to go into this world and vice versa. All right, so Claudia, make a scan roll. And also NISC as well. A scan roll? Yeah. A regular scan? Or a listen. Uh. Can I enhance it with something? Ah, uh, it's maybe not worth it. Whatever. Oh, sorry, this way it's the wrong dice. I rolled with a d40 and a d10. Makes no sense. Um, a d4 and a d10? You're going to tend to do pretty well with that. Actually, no, I did a 40. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm going to listen because I, I, did. I think that's probably better than trying to tear into it. And I roll a 38, which is success under my 40. Yeah. Okay, and Claudia? 
I, I actually succeeded. Okay, with both of you all, where you guys are camped, um, you're able to see the, the battlefield maybe a kilometer away or where the battlefield was. Um, there is um, NISC <clears throat> hears an uh, occasional um, crack of thunder over in the area of the the battlefield, but without a lightning bolt, there's no flash of lightning, just mm -hmm. a peal of thunder. Um, and the other thing about it is it's not really overcast. Well, that seems wrong to me. And this is, goes on um, uh, from time to time during the night. And Gina, from time to time during the night, you can see on the battlefield, you can see moving crimson shapes. Okay, crimson shapes. Um, but they stay where they are or are they coming closer? They do not come towards your camp. They seem to be one, uh, moving around the battlefield area. Do they uh, look like they have a target or are they floating around like... I don't know. You can't, it's, it's almost a kilometer away, but it's crimson lights. So you're able to see these lights, you know, from, from almost a kilometer away. Uh, but you can't, without getting closer, you can't get any real great specificity as to their movement. If I would get closer during the night, is this a problem with this terrain or not? This is flat plain country. It's, it's, it's like going out to, um, if you remember when we were driving around in eastern New Mexico, uh, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's dry chaparral and um, right near Hender's ruins, there's a salt lake. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you can see a long ways there, but um, you tell me if you want to get closer to Actually, I would like to get carefully closer. Okay, a Gina's going to leave. The, uh, Gina gets up and, and heads away from the camp to start heading a little bit towards the oh, battlefield. Yes. What are you doing? I want to, do, uh, there are crimson lights. I want to see what they are. It's important for tomorrow. Uh, I think I should probably go with you then. And I'm, if that's the case, I should wake somebody up to help guard while well, do it. And do it quickly before they're I'm gone. Go wake up um, Garen. Ask him if he can watch the thing. I'm going to go protect our um, the Arnold in here. So let's oh. let's talk. All right. We're going carefully closer. Do they react on us? Okay. When you get closer to the battlefield, uh, I want one more listen roll. <laughs> nope. Yes. You can hear in bits and places um, moaning of uh, moaning like people in pain um, or or have been wounded um, you know it, it, you hear a sound over in that direction then it, it stops and you hear a similar set of sounds in a different direction uh, and I, I, I'm going to say that the battlefield is basically, it's like a, you know, a kilometer by a kilometer area. So and in there, there's lots of point, there's, there's lots of bits where you hear point, hear voices and they, they shout out things like, help me. Oh, mother, mother, have mercy. And you, you hear sounds like, you know, voices like that and um, rolling around on the battlefield are, are blocks of crimson light. Sometimes they're relatively small, only like about a meter around. Sometimes they're, they're three times that big. Um, have I heard things like that before? Something haunted spirits that they're actually being tortured? Well, ghosts often speak. 
you know, when they manifest in this world, they, they, they often speak um, about things that matter to them. And, and, it is, and it is not abnormal for a battlefield to have a lot of dead unless those dead had been, the, the proper rules is after a battle, both sides negotiate about bringing the dead off the battle so that the dead can be, um, you know, properly interred. But that did not happen at this battle, if you remember. You guys just ran away. Okay, I know what to do now. Let's go back. I have to prep for next day. Try and get rid of these ghosts. Please help, help these ghosts out. Help these ghosts out to be properly buried. And uh, get, uh, show them the way to the underworld. Okay. Maybe the way they can give us some of their own mundane possessions, but they don't need any more, so they can use them to carry on the fight. What? What are you thinking about? Do Why you do you think, think we came loot? here? Yes. Did we think about loot. They need their things for their afterlife. Why did we come here? I know why. <laughs> yeah, we, we both know why. <laughs> I know why. I really think we were coming here to perform some, some ceremony for the dead. Of course, I am Are you totally mad? What, why on earth? <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, does this not is just, compute. <laughs> hey, does, does not compute at all. If, if I knew camels, this would be the straw that makes the camels back. <laughs> Fortunately, Philip, high llamas are much stronger than camels. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, well, I spent I actually spent the rest of the night uh, prep, uh, going in meditation and prepping myself. All right. So the next morning, after you guys have your uh, meal, which is probably actually, you've still got some decent food from Swenston, you can make your way to the battlefield. Anything specific? Yeah, I prep myself to bring, to, to guide ghosts. Okay. So you, you put your mourner's costume on and, I, and all I, that? The right hairstyle, the right black makeup, the right, uh, I chant to get myself into the mood with meditation and so on. I mean, I did it the rest of the night. And I walk bar barefoot, of course. Okay, rest of you guys, presumably nothing like that. No, I mean, we've got, we've got hopefully, and Kala can help us against these spirits yeah. that are gonna come. And I'm going to just going to remind you that uh, my shamanic gift um, is the spell extension. And last play gaming session, I cast a, a spirit screen through a uh, five point spirit screen. So and you it's still active. So what spirit screen does for you is, is it acts basically like protection does for physical armor against spirit attacks. So Unlike the rest of you all, she has five points of spirit armor up around her. So very few ghosts can actually, even if they're successful in attacking her, can actually do very much to Inkala. That is not the case with the rest of you all. And do you all you all understand how spirit combat works? I think we're going to find out soon, aren't we? Mm. Yeah. I, I, I just want to give a primer because it's kind of useful for you all. Spirit combat works to a large extent like regular, like regular combat. You guys roll against your 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 spirit combat skills um, uh, as if it's attack and defense, and you suffer damage if the other person succeeds over you. And the damage is based on your power plus your charisma. So you'll see that you've got spirit damage written down somewhere right. on your character sheet. Now, the sucky thing about it is how good is your spirit combat, which is the primary skill that you have for dealing with spirits? Mine? Not, not in Kala. Not in Kala. How, how about you, Nisk? 
Uh, my spirit combat is a 50. Which is very good. I can get it. Mine's 45. Cold Brast? Uh, 50 as well. Also very good. Gina? 17. Okay, Gina's quite good at dealing with spirits, as is in Kala. He's quite good at dealing with spirits. I have the a biggest, yeah. I have command ghost as one of my rune magic spells. How many ghosts? Uh, can I only command one? One ghost. <laughs> Thank you. It's not fair. <laughs> Other people uh, can't command any ghosts. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so I'm, I need to figure out who's the leader of the ghosts that I can command the leader of the ghosts around and this leader can... Uh, Command the other ghosts? That might be a way. There might not be, hopefully, there are not hundreds of ghosts manifest in the world um, uh, there. That, that also would make a difference. Or maybe you won't try to encounter every single ghost on the battlefield, but merely a handful. Mm hmm. Um, Key things that all of your characters can do. There is a common rune magic spell called Spirit Block. And what Spirit Block <laughs> does... <laughs> what? I'm just looking that up. Spirit <laughs> Block, do you want to read it out? Um, it'll take me a minute to find it. This is a little further down. Uh, page 341. Yeah, it's the other bit. Spirit Block helps protect the recipient from attack by spirits. Each point of the spell acts as spiritual armor and absorbs two points of magic point damage in spirit combat. So for example, so if you have spirit block two, oh. then the first four points of spirit combat that damage done by a spirit is knocked away. Now the so damage is physical damage? Direct? No, it's magic point damage. Oh, great. Okay. And, and, and uh, what was that? So I, I can use as many room points as I want with this. No, no, no. He means no. The issue is that your hit points are your pal. Yeah. And um, so you have up to three. You have three room points, right? Yeah. So in theory, you could cast up to a a three point spirit. Yeah, that, that was spell. the question. Yeah. Okay. Does it stack with spirit screen? No. Uh, yes, it does. Now, the other spell I want to throw on, if this is an all-day kind of event that I just want to raise to you all, is there is another common rune spell. So this is how we introduce common rune spells to you all, called Extension. Oh, and yeah. so, for, so, for example, normally a spell lasts 15 minutes. But if you cast... If you put a rune point, stacked it with one point of extension, it lasts an hour instead of 15 minutes. If you cast two points of extension, it lasts a day, and so on. So I just want to keep that in mind as you guys go to the haunted battlefield. Um, is there an interesting spirit magic spell? called Spirit Screen. And that works against spirits the same way that protection works against regular damage. But it lasts for like two minutes, unless you have special abilities. Yes, like in Kala. So it sucks anyway. So I need my rune points for my command ghost. OK. The point is, I want us to uh, this. The the reason for going through this is you guys are going onto a haunted battlefield that you know has ghosts. It also probably has other things on it, and you should be aware that these are your tools for dealing with them. The final thing is is that any spirit can be communicated with in either its native language that it knew in life or in spirit speech um, i might want to ask you um a little bit more about capturing spirits after if because if, if it's like this if me as a shaman actually o overcomes the spirit 
biceps can capture it up to its maximum amount of power, right? Correct. Yeah. And you can have that spirit, right? You can force that spirit to serve you. Yeah. Um, I have another question. When I do my summon dead, it's also only one dead I can summon, or can I summon the battlefield? You don't want to summon the whole dead of the battlefield. Why not? <laughs> Good question. I, I think we should tie her up and leave her at the camp. <laughs> it's far too dangerous. All right. So I want to give you guys the first mental impressions of this. We've only got about 12 minutes left, but we've got enough to get your, your, your mind moving and, and, and it's pretty clear what's going to happen the next session here. The battlefield is an area and by, you know, the battle was what about almost a season. It was over a season ago, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So over a season ago. So you can see, uh, uh, you know, it's it's been a season. The dead were not gathered up afterwards, and this was too far from human habitation and what um, whatnot. The Praxians haven't come here to pick the battlefield, so you can see the dead, and in its hundreds, maybe over a thousand, maybe more than a thousand uh, bodies scattered around this this area of land, uh, a kilometer by a kilometer square. Uh, still wearing armor, um, uh, still armed. But what condition do you think they're in after being out in the, um, uh, in the sun? I believe they were here all summer and through the autumn. Kind of dried. Oh, God. Mm. Well, they're not. Also, they don't. Also, they were like, I mean, the ravens came and stuff too, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, but They've been picked, their bones have been picked, I suspect, by birds and, and I, what were we going to say, Gina? I have prepared corpse on 75%. <laughs> so, please, I can deal with them. A and first can, I had this bottle of perfume, <laughs> which I got. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm, I, 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 I suspect that after, after the, being exposed for um, uh, most of the summer and, and, um, and autumn, I think it's actually been a season and a half or so, uh, I actually suspect they're mostly bones, wouldn't they be? Guys? There might be some but surprises underneath. What was that? But even these corpses need to be prepared and well, put of course. Under, under the earth. So I have a lot of things to do. <laughs> I'm not digging. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not digging. About, you do not have to dig. 2, you can bring stones to make stone oh, well, <laughs> oh, like like There are thousands. Yes, you can pile them up. I have no problem with a mass grave. <laughs> That's okay then. <laughs> so Gina's proposal is to gather all of the dead and build a mound out of them. Yes. A hecatomb. Yes. And well, presumably, no, ten presumably light it on fire or whatnot. We we have we have different options. We can we can dig a big hole and throw them all in. We can make the make the mound of bones and put stones outside. Or we can light them on fire. I don't think we're prepared enough to be able to send <laughs> off fire for the months that that would take all of the spirits and all of the loons and all of the other things that are here. But if, if you that's want why we're here. No. You know, we're here to loot. Otherwise, you would have taken people with us to do this. Yeah. And it had you've, got your, you've got your hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, if he's really good at digging, he might pull it off in half a year. But <laughs> Waha Tall says to you all, Waha Tall doesn't dig. Yeah. <laughs> we're with on this one, Waha Tall. Waha Tall doesn't, doesn't dig. Tall. And I told us, says, well, I, I would, even if I would, could dig, I would. <laughs> if, if you go there and perhaps you find, say, an, you know, a, a dead priestess or something like that, that's different. We should take that special rituals to protect them. But we cannot take every person from this battlefield, and nor should we try. 
Bless the area, give it a new name. That's not fair. I mean, that is that. What you got to do with it? <laughs> anyway, it's out of question. What, what does actually my code say to prefer uh, some to others? Um, high core attack is nothing if not pragmatic. Okay, so more status, better. Because more sacrifices, more food for, for her table. Mm. Or kin. People, dead people that will return the favor first. So, you know, kin and friends and important people first. And then kind of a pecking order down. Okay, how do we discover important people under the bones which are laying around? Well, they're actually most of the, 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 the bodies here are still garbed. You know, that people died, that they, they died and your army fled and the Lunars didn't come to pick um, what was left. And uh, how many, are there any dead Lunars in between? Well, uh, this is, I'm giving you guys the visual impression of the battlefield. And um, then next session, we are going to explore the battlefield and the spirits and the loons and whatever was making the thunder sounds. Does that sound okay? That, that yes. sounds good, yeah. And the question so, is how much my rune magic do I want to spend with extension? <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to stop this here because it is just about 11.30 at night, but this is a good starting point because I think next session, we've had two, we had had, uh, I think our first two or three sessions had had an awful lot of combat. Then we had had two relatively low combat sessions, as in uh, almost none, two or three. And now we will see what happens to the next session. Mm. But presumably um, going to the haunted battlefield, something will happen. So is yeah. this guy okay stopping point for you guys? Sounds good. It's okay. I want to thank everybody for watching this. I want to thank all my players um, and everybody involved. And if you want to learn more about RuneQuest of Chaosium, you can just check out our website at www.chaosium.com. Thank you all. Yep. And if you like this, um, play, watching this and our other Chaosium games, please like our channel and subscribe. Thank you very much. Woo!